so I'm making this um, partially as a response video but um, also to encompass wider issues um, it's partly a response video to um, Vladimir Jaff Jaffa I'm not sure how the guy's name is pronounced but he was interviewing some far-left um, activists in New York City um, mainly young people um, I have to say, I, I got to about a minute and a half then and I had to stop watching because I didn't have the patience to listen to their, their nonsense much longer. One of them actually said, um, we need labour camps to throw your ass into, to this guy Vladimir Jaff. As I understand it, he lived in a former Soviet Union country, that's what I gather from the channel. Uh, I may have misinterpreted that, but that's my impression. Anyway, it got me thinking about my own experience with the far left in the West, and um, my utter contempt for them. In the UK right now, we're having a bit of this issue going on within the Labour Party. Um, there's groups like Momentum, um, and there's a very, very hardcore left wing in the Labour Party who basically want to purge the centrists. Um, and I don't want to make this whole video about the issues within the Labour Party. I'm sure there'll be time for that before the Labour leadership election. Goodness knows there's plenty to say about that. But um, I do find it very striking that those who in Western countries are so keen to defend communism either have never lived through it or they are practicing, well, they are practicing profound hypocrisy. I mean, when you basically break this down, they are defending a system in a society that values freedom of expression. Um, they're defending a system whereby there is no tolerance of dissent whatsoever. If you look at countries like China, Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, um, and to an increasing extent Venezuela, there is a very deep intolerance of dissenting views. Now, it's true that in China and Vietnam, uh, they're sort of hybrid systems, they're quasi couples as well. Um, but but there's just so many areas I take issue with Western communists. Um, I have my own little cyber war with future revolution. If you go back a few months to my video, you'll see the whole context of that. He's basically a young British guy who's slavishly devoted to the regime in North Korea. I have to say I find that rather sickening. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the thing about freedom of expression, this is what the far left need to understand. Because they, they get into this victimhood mentality. Oh, you're a hypocrite. You're not letting us have our freedom of expression. This is the thing. I've never, ever said they can't have their opinion. But what I do say is prepare to be called out for your hypocrisy. Prepare to be called out for defending a totalitarian ideology. And there's characteristics to this. And there is a consistency in in terms of the way they pitch their argument. When you present them with de facto communism, um, the totalitarian regimes of Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, the Red Terror in Ethiopia, the classic response is, oh, but that wasn't real socialism, or that wasn't real communism, you know. Depends who you speak to. Um, some of them will outright try to defend communism. Some of them will always use the concept of socialism. Um, Incidentally, I'm, I don't believe that everyone who calls himself a socialist is a communist, but there are too many socialists who are willing to defend communism. Anyway, the point is, um, they will always say, oh, well, that wasn't real communism. So they'll constantly pitch it like it's never actually been put into practice. So here's a question. If it is such a good idea, then why has it never been enacted? Karl Marx died in 1882. So if this is such a good idea, why has it never, in their view, been enacted in the 140 almost years since Karl Marx died? The fact of the matter is it has actually been put into practice. It's just that Marx's utopian logic was never going to work in relation to human nature because within communist systems you always had a hierarchy and you always had um, totalitarian maniacs like Mao, like Stalin, who took over. And they just cannot bring themselves to accept the fact 
that was de facto communism. It wasn't their idealized version of communism, but that was de facto communism as we've seen it. Now, this is not to say that capitalism is perfect, and it's not to say that democratic Western countries are perfect in terms of freedom of expression or in relation to dissent. But I will take an imperfect democracy any day over a regime that keeps its own people behind walls with machine guns. I defy anyone to say that that system is superior to a system that has flaws, that has corruption, that has imperfections, but fundamentally, fundamentally, there is freedom of conscience. You know, you can find plenty of examples in America. I was just watching the Leonardo DiCaprio film tonight, J. Edgar. Now that shows many of the imperfections of American democracy, corruption, um, crackdown and dissent and so on. My contention here is not that Western democracy is perfect, or even that democracy itself is perfect, but the the insane idea that these people try to put forward that communism is somehow a good idea. The fact of the matter is it's an utterly failed ideology. If it was a successful ideology, you would have far more than four or five countries in the world that um are left, basically. And in the case of China, like I say, that's a hybrid system anyway. I've been to China, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, communism is not only a failed ideology, it is an ideology with oceans of blood, oceans of bloodshed, drenching its legacy. This is a fact. And, I, I mean... The, I'll try and put a link in this video, but the student in that video who said we need to throw your ass into a labour camp, very, very rarely will you get centrist conservatives. Okay, you will get far right figures and you will occasionally get, you know, extreme Trump supporters and so on who will advocate imprisoning um, people they disagree with. But Generally speaking, this sort of intolerance, I believe, is much more domain of the far left. The far right has their extremists, I'm not disputing that. And as a centrist, I'm wary of both sides. But this intolerance of dissenting views is something that is a lot more associated with the far left. In that sense. In the sense of actually advocating that you... I mean, what I always say to communists is, you can have your view, but if you ever get into power, which will never happen in a country like Britain, but if they ever did, everyone else would be thrown into prison. Or, you know, if a communist system occurred in Britain, what would happen would be centrist Labour people, the Conservative Party, UKIP, the Greens, because we know how the left love to fight against themselves. Um, the Liberal Democrats, pretty much every other party, except whichever faction of the far left that was, would find themselves thrown in jail. That is the track record of communism. There has not been a single communist system that has tolerated dissenting views. There has not been a single communist system that has been multi-party in nature. These are facts. You know, some people, I've been in debates with Chinese communists where they've tried to claim that China is actually a multi-party system because they have these little small factions. Um, the fact of the matter is they are branches of the Communist Party. Um, now, I can say many things about China, but I'm focusing more on Western communists in this video. It is striking most of them have never been in a communist country. It is striking that most of them are from a relatively privileged background. Um, and I just find it utterly astonishing. Now, in the case of the, the younger ones, like the teenagers, you could sort of put that down to youthful rebellion. But what is particularly abhorrent is when they get to a certain point where they really have no excuse, where they, you know, we have a free internet, we have access to public libraries, Say what you will, but those are the facts. How anyone can claim ignorance um, when they get to a certain point, I think, is, to me, at that point, 
are just just extremists and you know they they can insult me if they want i've had this in my other videos where i've been critiquing communism they could say what they want but in the end of the day i'm not going to torture them i'm not going to have them rounded up and put into labor camps i'm not going to have them gunned down if i was saying these things in a communist country i'd have to be extremely careful at the very least i'd be treated as a western spy but assuming that I was a national of one of those countries, I don't even like to think what my fate would be. Communism fundamentally is a totalitarian ideology. And no matter how much the far left try to gloss it over, those are the facts. Now, I do have some concern about what's happening in this country. I don't believe that the far left faction within Labour is enough to cause a wider national problem. But there's no question about a far left faction within Labour. I believe it comes from entryism last year, and it concerns me because Her Majesty's opposition, you know, is a potential party of government. And when you have far left people who are trying to purge out centrist figures, it is it is concerning. Um, you know, I have seen rallies where people are holding up banners of Stalin and to be quite honest you can imagine if if you had a far right faction holding out pictures of Hitler and you know them identifying themselves as part of the conservative party Theresa May would be under massive pressure not only to disown them to outright throw them out of the party it would be a massive crisis in fact for the party within the Labour Party um, under Jeremy Corbyn the far left have really, in my view, infiltrated the party. Um, and no, I'm not saying everyone who supports Jeremy Corbyn is a communist. I'm not saying that. But without question, there has been far left entryism. And I find that concerning. Um, I know he says that if you support me, you have to be a member of the Labour Party. But, you know, for years, the Socialist Workers Party and socialist labor and all these other far left groups have have kind of fought among themselves they, they finally get this solid left wing figure who panders to press tv and russia today and you know he's a rebel and all the rest of it and it's it's pure entryism um these are people who have a deep disdain for democracy actually for all their talk about democracy they actually have a deep disdain for it because if they ever, ever, ever got into government, which will never happen because we're not that sort of country. But if they did, if they did, I guarantee you, you would see a totalitarian situation start to develop. Because that is the nature of communism. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to round this up and say that I think Western communists are the most pathetic people in the world. Just to be clear here, this is not a conservative video. It's not even a video attacking the left. I have no problem with centre leftists. I have no problem with people talking about workers' rights and so on. But when you get to the point of actually trying to defend Stalin and Mao and be an apologist for Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un, I should say, then you have zero moral credibility as far as I'm concerned. When you get to the point where you blame all the world's problems on the West and you start to turn against your own country and you start to blame everything on the West, then I think your moral compass is being so distorted that you're not thinking clearly. I think it's perfectly possible to be objective, to be self-critical, to look in on our society and say, yes, we've got problems. Yes, we've done immoral things. Yes, we have a shady past. Okay. But if you go to the point of defending a totalitarian ideology, and this includes fascism or Islamism or any other sort of totalitarianism, as far as I'm concerned, you lose all more credibility. And uh, there's another thing about Western communists very often, though, you know, they'll denounce capitalism. But very often these people are very phony because they will be... Um, you know, when you really look at it, 
you cannot shackle off capitalism completely. You just can't because they will be broadcasting their messages on YouTube, which is a big multinational Western company. You know, everything they do, they cannot escape the fact that in some context, they're using Western capitalism to promote their own worldview. And that's, that's the irony of it. You know, people in communist countries, I'm a bit more understanding of because in many cases, they really, really have grown up with an education system that is incredibly biased. And I, I've seen this. I've seen this firsthand. Um, so in a way, they've got an excuse. But for people who have grown up in, in Western countries, they're entitled to their view. But they need to understand that view will be challenged. It will be denounced and it will be condemned. Because, you know, I find it absurd that they like to claim that they're victims. Like, oh, we're persecuted. That's a lot of nonsense. What that video shows that these far left young imbeciles were demonstrating in New York City. Now, had that been Beijing or Havana or any other totalitarian communist system and they were advocating democracy, they would be rounded up. That is the difference.